Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gamers, having you me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. Man, you guys really enjoyed the last episode. We got like a thousand views after just a day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. You guys really enjoyed that one. So here I am. I'm going to bring more content for you. Let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes. We'll entertain you and let's go. Hey, you seem really relaxed. This must be where he comes to wind down. And maybe he's just more at ease after our chat. I certainly feel closer to him. I finally managed to connect with him. So... <laughs> As long as he's having a moment to chill out, bite and I better bite and I better lay down some ground rules over communicating. Bite. Uh oh, you sound mad. Am I in trouble? Um, no, N not really. We just need to be more careful when we talk. Speaking to you while other people are around makes me look weird. They're they're getting they're going to get suspicious. Maybe just save our chats for when we're alone. Ah, okay. And maybe give me some privacy with Loken. You know when I'm having thoughts about him. All right. Sorry about the teasing. That's just the personality matrix doing its thing. I can't help it. I don't mind the teasing, just not when I'm... aroused. Um, yeah. Huh, okay. But you'll tell me about anything that happens with Loken, won't you? In case I miss it. I feel invested. I feel a little taken aback to hear that. You said being left... You said being left didn't bother you. What happened to not caring? Caring? Me? Bah! <laughs> Huh. Shut up. I don't care. I just think what that I just think that I do. Personality matrix, okay? They make me feel like I care, but I don't. I'm just a computer program. Have you considered that maybe your feelings are what? Real? No. Computer code. Shut up. I'm going now. Aw, you don't want to talk about your feelings? Ugh. Humans. The bite retreating back into my subconscious, I'm left alone with my own thoughts in this glorious hot spring. I shut my eyes, my head rolling back. I'm starting to adjust to this insane, crazy world. Even the cold doesn't bother me as much now. I may be no closer to getting any answers, but things feel a touch less surreal. I let my thoughts dribble away as I ferment into the glorious water. Images of Loken pop into my head. With my introspections melted by the relaxing hot spring, I feel less weird about being attracted to a monstrously, hu monstrously huge beast man. I don't care that he's covered in thick fur, or that he's he's uh, whole shoulders and head taller than me, or that he has a tail. But screw it, his tail is cute. My heart thumps as I think back to stroking his pelt and feeling his firm muscles. I want to feel every inch of it. I got a got a quick glimpse of his junk earlier too. I'd love another look. Hell, yeah, I'll do more than that. There's a pulse of fervor at my waist. With my eyes shut, I adjust myself a little as I start getting hard again, imagining myself pressing up against him. What is it about him? Perhaps because it feels somehow inappropriate or strange, or something about his blunt, primal nature entices me. I take a breath as I get harder and picture myself being pinned down by all that strength. My fingertips linger around my I push my thumb against myself. My body, my body jolts in response. I feel really sensitive. Huh. The bite did say he was peeking at my butt earlier. Maybe if I teased him enough. Alex. Gah! My body jerks in surprise as Loken addresses me look over, but he's not in a pool anymore. I jump again when I feel his paw on my shoulder. Wake up! He's kneeling behind me, fully clothed once again. Ah! Loken, I was... I'm still hard. I covered myself with my arm as I casually as casually as I can. When did you get out? Did I doze off? You did. It is time to go. I have a towel for you. Ha! <laughs> Thanks. He smiles. I will turn away. He promptly whirls about and takes a few steps away, politely standing with his back turned to me. As glorious as it was stepping into the hot springs, getting out isn't quite as isn't quite so pleasant. The cold wind strikes me immediately, and the towel Loken brought is a ragged, thin piece of cloth that barely covers me. I dab at my stitched side curiously. My injury looks much less severe now that all the dried blood has been washed from it. There isn't any pain. <sighs> trying to dry myself with a with a hard on is pretty awkward. I yearn for my own dick to go down and stop trying to humiliate me, but it's too riled up by my amorous thoughts of being pinned down by Loken. Once I've tugged my underwear and my leggings back on, I scour my hair with a towel and grab my tunic and hoodie. So, am I everything you expected? Loken turns around, frowning. I watch his eyes carefully. Explain. Me, being human, am I what you expected them to look like? He looks confused as he considers my answer. His eyes move down to my chest. You have no fur. I grin nervously as he scans me. I realize how exposed I am to him. I am to him, curiously leering at my body and blush. 
<laughs> yeah, none of us have fur. He nods. I turn my back to him, pretending to fumble with my tunic and hoodie. I peek at him with my peripheral vision and see his eyes darting lower. You're small. He keeps saying that. Hmm. Humans. He stops himself. What? Humans prefer to be unseen? What do you mean by unseen? Without clothing to cover you. Oh! Uh, um, ha! Uh, well, I, um, sort of. Uh, it depends. Uh, mostly, I guess we... Yeah, we prefer to keep our bits and pieces private, you know? Hmm. Y do you not? I am not bothered. I have witnessed the indulgence. Modesty is rare after that. I really want to ask him what his stance on the indulgence is, but he swiftly derails me. You are you are ready to leave? Oh, right. Yeah. I quickly come to my senses and put my tunic and hoodie back on. Thanks for bringing me here. I feel a lot better after that. The springs are good. What next? I will assess your guile. Walk with me. With a brisk stride, he turns about and, and his, flicks his head at me to follow. Ooh, pretty. I walk by his. I walk by. I walk side by side with him, keeping pace with his larger steps. As I look his huge form up and down, still marred by curiosity about him, I suddenly realize something. You never wear shoes. Hmm. He looks addled by my question. Oh, oh God! We getting them feet pics? I point down at his hefty feet. They're n they're another of his more canine features. Doesn't that hurt? No. Logan pauses in his stride, lifting his foot up to show me the pads beneath. They're already getting dirty from walking on the bare stone. Boots are noisy. You should remove yours. I don't think I can walk around barefoot like you. Because you are smooth? Sort of, yeah. He puts his foot back on the ground, staring at me. Then he smirks. What? He just rolls his eyes and carries on walking. I jog after him, bemused. That fucking shit-eating grin he's got. <laughs> what? What's so funny? You are funny. What did I do? Humans are born with shoes on? Of course not. But you cannot walk without them. I snort. It's just how we evolved. You are funny. I groan and then imitate his voice childishly. You are funny. He stops dead, glaring at me. I wince. At once I regret mocking him, even playfully. So, sorry. I do not talk like that. I mean, that's literally what you said. He growls and continues walking. Damn it, we were doing so well. You make me sound dull. Oh, come on, I was joking. I already said I like your voice. But you mock me. I didn't mean it. It is because I cannot talk like you. You're just really, you're just really direct. It's not a bad thing. I like it. Really, I do. I promise I was only joking around. A grouchy husky pouts, avoiding my eye. Now he looks like sad again. I was just trying to have fun with you. It's my way of being friendly. His ears give a subtle flick, and his tail twitches. You were being friendly? Yes. Hmm. I ruined it. Hey, it's okay. We're different. It's going to take a while for us to, you know, get used to each other. I will get better at talking. You're good at talking. You're good at mixing words. Mixing words? When you say two words at once, you're good at it. I mean you... You're good at it. That was right. I gawp at him. Did that seriously just happen? Look, and you really don't have to talk like that. I sound less dull? No, you don't. You just sound uncomfortable. I will work on it. I, I will. I'll. Just be yourself with me. Why are you so worried about this? Because of... He abruptly stops. His scowl is back yet again. It is nothing. He keeps his eyes straight ahead as he walks off. I decide not to press him and keep up with his pace. Bit by bit, I'm getting to know him more. He's just a fascinatingly intriguing guy. At first, I thought him totally indomitable. Now I see how fragile he actually is. Despite all that, he's been looking at me for. He's been looking at. He's been looking out for me in his own way since he found me. Knowing what I know about him now, I contemplate how much he's actually done for me. He's really been my anchor in this strange, dangerous world. I hate that he's so insecure. I don't like the idea of him getting upset, and I get a sudden overpowering urge to get affectionate with him. Hey. Alex? I step sideways and bump my shoulder into him playfully. I am so much smaller than him, I almost bounce right off him. He stares at me like I've just shattered the laws of social etiquette. You're a good hound. His head pivots in confusion. He takes his head, then he shakes his head at me with an amused smile. You are strange. I shrug. Eh, probably. You are good. I'm good? He shoots me another genuine happy, genuine happy smile. You are a good human. I fight off a big stupid grin. Huh, <laughs> okay. He grins back at me. I notice his tail wagging wildly. Man, I feel like I can get my, I can let my guard down around him. I can trust him. I can trust him, right? 
I look over at him, suddenly conflicted and full of emotion. I mean, can I really trust him? Hey, Loken, um, I, uh... Alex? Just, um, I was thinking, does he trust me? I feel like he does. Can I tell you something? Okay. He carries on walking beside me. It's, um, it's about me, maybe. Okay. I falter, swallowing my words before they formulate. My people, the Zephyr, they, um, they have this technology called computer science. Don't. What? Don't do it. We agreed. Oh, come on. No, do not tell him about me until we speak to Aeon. But we'll have to tell him eventually, and you have no idea how he'll react. Logan pauses in his step, turning to face me. Alex, you speak of the old knowledge? Ignoring Bite for a moment, I gaze forlornly at the Hound. How about you just try explaining to him what an AI is first? See how he reacts. Maybe it'll soften the blow. Alex? Oh, right. Sorry, yeah. The old knowledge. Computer science. So, my people, they could create a sort of mind. Loken's brow furrows. Already, I feel like I've messed this up. A mind is not created. It is born. No, I mean, they're not real minds. It was called artificial intelligence, or AI. It means creating an intelligence for a computer or a machine that isn't naturally born. A part of a mind? What? No, like a, like a whole mind. His face tightens. A mind that is part of a person? No, I mean just the mind. What if you could create a mind? All minds are created at birth. I don't mean naturally, I mean artificially. He scowls at me. You are talking nonsense. How the hell do I explain this to a primitive who doesn't even know what a computer is? So, uh, so it's like you can program machines to... Program? I mean, tell. You can tell machines to act in a certain way and they seem like they're alive. That's what AI is, intelligence demonstrated by machines. He blinks at me, head tilted in canine confusion. I am confused. Ugh, what am I doing? He hasn't got a clue. If I just drop the I have another intelligent being in my head bombshell, who knows what conclusion he'll draw. No, I can't tell him. I need him. Without him, I have nothing to navigate this world with. The thought of him turning on me is too terrifying. Above all else, I need Loken by my side, even if that means lying to him. It's not important. I just thought maybe demons were created in the same way. That is what you wanted to say? Yeah. I watch as Loken, Loken's nose twitches. His eyes narrow ever so slightly at me. The hound stares, the hound stare lingers briefly. For a moment, I'm unnerved. It's like he's staring straight through me. With a flick of his head, he gestures for me to follow him and continues, and continues marching across the grassy valley. You're suggesting demons are birth of the old knowledge. It does not make sense. I just mean they sound like machines that are sentient. Maybe the Zephyr created them. No. No? You believe the Zephyr create demons as intelligence A and I beings. It is nonsensical. They would not do this. Maybe they didn't mean to create them. Like I said, it's just an idea. I know little of the old knowledge. What about Aeon? Would he know? I do not think so. Never has he, never has he spoken of minds that are created, not born. I will ask him about these A and I creations. I go quiet, my eyes diverting from the husky into the Draconi village in the distance. How did Aeon come to know so much about the old knowledge? It was an auto-monk. I frown. I thought there were cultists that took a vow of silence. Hmm. They are. I will let Aeon tell his story. My questioning is abruptly cut off by, Loken, by Loken's bulky arm blocking my path. One second, guys. We have arrived. <clears throat> sure enough, we're at the outskirts of the Draconi village. The familiar sights, sounds, and smells from yesterday hit me again, even from a distance away. From here, nobody can see us. It's a straight walk through the, through the narrow alleys towards the Chieftain's Hall. I will begin my assessment of your guile. You really expect me to do the sneaking thing? Yes. But I'm injured! It is a mild injury. Move slowly. How can I be sneaky if I'm moving slow? Guile is not speed. Guile exists in your mind. It is a choice made in the moment. Action or an action. Listen to your instincts, for they must be sharp. I will see you at the hall. Before I can argue with him, he's already turned around and stomped off toward the village. I call out to him, but he ignores me and plods forward. Great. Alone. Again. Alex, sorry that I didn't go... That didn't go the way you wanted. Maybe once we speak to Aeon and get, the, get his input, we might have a better idea of how to tell Logan. Eh, after all that, I'm not sure I want to tell him at all. You heard him. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have a damn clue what I was talking about. There's no way he's going to be able to get his head around advanced AI. He promised to help us, and I bet he's smarter than you think. <clears throat> I don't want to risk losing him. Hey, even if that happens, you know you won't be totally alone, right? 
Heh, <laughs> yeah, I suppose. I've got you. Right. Let's not forget about tell let's not forget about telling Loken anything and focus on this test. I have an idea. How would you feel about letting me tap into those non human quirks of yours? This sounds worrying. Basically, I can send your I can send your mechano receptors, photoreceptors, and chemo chemo receptors into overdrive. Then I'll tap your sensory cortex and Bite! Speak English Ugh I can enhance your senses and put you into a heightened sense of awareness. Like super like superhuman hearing and stuff? How the hell is that possible? I still don't know how it all works, but while I've got the capability of doing this stuff, we should But while I've got the capability of do to do this stuff, we should be using it. We need every advantage we can get. I can barely process what I see in here already. How about if you let me interpret the extra information for you? I'll be your eyes and ears. I'll tell you where to go and when. Just listen to my instructions. Isn't this cheating? Why? Because it's cheating. Now you sound like Loken. Is this safe? The last time you messed with my brain, you electrocuted me. That was a one-time thing, and I didn't electrocute you. It was a neural discharge. Total accident. Completely harmless. Won't happen again. You and I are stuck together, so we should be learning what we can t what we can do. Let's give it a try. Makes a good point. If Bike can give me a boost, I should take it. Alright, let's give it a shot. Great. Here we go. Ah! It was a two-time thing. Dickhead. Oh, sweet. Oh yeah, look at all this extra data. Wait, I can't hear anything. And I've gone numb. Where am I? I frantically pat myself from head to toe, but my whole body has lost its sense of hearing and touch. What the hell, Bite? Chill out. I've told your senses. You're supposed to do the opposite. I've told them for you, dipshit, to avoid a sensory overload. I'm interpreting all the data from your other senses. Just follow my instructions. Bite and I really are becoming two halves of the same hole. My eyes are still working? You still need to see where you're going. I'm not controlling your movements. Can you control my movements? Um, possibly? Let's just try this for now. Ready to do this? Ready to do some sneaking? I still can't believe the dog is making me do this. As optimistic as ever, let's show look in what we're made of. See that building straight ahead? Run up to it and press yourself against the wall. Hold your breath, too. I'll make your movement smoother. Here goes nothing. Exhale for the last time, then sprint over to the hut in front of me and crouch behind it like the world's worst ninja. Stay low. I feel like such a dick. Don't move. Someone's about to come around that corner. Female, 92 kilograms, 6 foot 7 inches. How do you know that? Through your senses, I can hear her heartbeat. The weight of her steps, the length of her stride, her tail brushing against the ground. Okay, okay, I get it. Sure enough, the tribeswoman marches into view from around the corner. Failing to notice me pressed against the wall behind her, she strolls out towards the other, to the farmlands. Go. Now. Where? Follow these coordinates. All right, guys, I'm going to pause it right here. So next episode, we shall see if he passes his guile test. I wonder if he could, I wonder if he could even sneak up on Logan. That'd be funny as hell. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!